The Hollywood filmmaking system has been using matte boxes as long as they've been making motion pictures. They are called matte boxes for a reason. They were designed to hold mats, filters, for lenses, and block unwanted light from getting in. Now the independent filmmaker can use them, too, with filters. Once you buy a matte box, it will be with you for a long time. Cameras and lenses change, but matte boxes usually do not. You are able to use a good matte box for years and years. Today we're going to talk about the matte box for the JTZ DP30 filmmaking system. JTZ is a premium brand manufactured by the same factory who makes the budget-oriented Fotga branded matte boxes. They are absolute market leaders for their segment in the last years. This is Alan Halfhill for Personal View and this will be a look at this matte box. This is a large and sturdy matte box. Hence it weighs 1.3 kilograms without flags and 1.8 kilograms with flags. It is mainly built of aluminum and is CNC machined. There is carbon fiber in the matte box main body. It is very well made. An adapter for 19 millimeter rails is included in the kit. And what you do is you replace the 15 millimeter with the 19 millimeter. You remove these two screws right here and put this on instead. And it mounts like so. There are two hex screws that need to be loosened with an included Allen wrench. And then you replace it and put on the 19 millimeter rods. We are going to mount this mat box on 15 millimeter rails. You slide it in and then you tighten up the thumb screws that are on the rails. It is very easy to turn with your fingers. This is a swing away type mat box. You pull up this lever and then you can open up the mat box. This is very great for changing lenses and it's important for primes. The standard height for 15 millimeter rod systems is 85 millimeters, which is the distance from the opening center to the point located between the centers of the rods. This mat box is aimed to use as standard. The height of the mat box can be adjusted on the right hand side of it. You loosen these two thumb screws and then there's a big silver knob here on the top. And if you turn it counterclockwise, it goes up. You turn it clockwise, it goes down. There is these little arrows that we can see right at the moment to show where the default value is. This is at 85 millimeters above the rods. You can raise it up to 89.3 millimeters above the rods by turning the knob counterclockwise. If you lower it below the default marking, you can go down to 80.7 millimeters as well above the center of the rods. When you are done making your adjustments, be sure to tighten these thumb screws again. Now let's install the flags onto the mat box. This top flag, which is folded for traveling convenience, is made of metal. The top flag weighs 136 grams and is 1.7 millimeters thick for strength. The top flag is slid into these two round thumb screws on the top of the mat box. You have to turn them clockwise to make it very secure. There are these two T-screws 
for adjusting the height of the flag. And you just tighten them up. Some matte boxes only come with the top flag. This matte box comes with two side flags as well. They weigh 113 grams and are also 1.7 millimeters thick. The side flags are installed by sliding them into the center of this bracket and then tightening the thumb screw. If you loosen this, the flag does not fall out because it's in the center of this bra bracket you see here. There is a T-screw here so you can adjust where you want the flag to sit. And then you tighten it. And then you have this other thumb screw so you can adjust the height of the side flag. You do not see this adjustment on inexpensive matte boxes. There are rubber stops on the flags and the reason for that is if you adjust your flag too far back it won't actually hit the body of the matte box. And this little bumper is an advanced feature of this matte box. You can see on the bottom here there are also two round silver screws and the reason for that is you can remove the top flag and put it on the bottom of the matte box to protect from light coming up from down below the matte box. There are also two T-screws mounted on the bottom of the 15 millimeter rod adapter and you can put them into the bottom of the front of the mat box for locking this in place. This mat box comes with two 4x4 filter stages. These filter stages are made out of aluminum and are very sturdy. Some mat boxes come with plastic filter stages. The stages are six millimeters wide. It can hold two, three, and four millimeter filters. And then you lock it down like so by turning this little silver knob. The two silver knobs are apart from each other for both stages, so it's easy to turn either one of them. I have some four by four filters here. I have this variable ND filter. I will put this variable ND filter into this stage by dropping it in the bottom and lifting up on this top part that is spring loaded. As you can see, it's very securely in there and is not going to go anywhere. And then you slide it into the matte boxes filter stage holder. The front stage moves up and down if you loosen the thumb screw. As you can see, it goes up to about here and then can go down to about there to have the full width. But it's fully adjustable all the way down and all the way up. In fact, it'll go through the whole matte box. The second filter rotates. As you can see right now, it freely rotates all the way around 360 degrees. If the rods are sticking out like so, now it'll go as far as the little knob or lever and also on the other side as far as the stage holder. Why would you have the rods present underneath the filter stage? If you're using a zoom lens, it's easier to move the matte box forwards and backwards than it is to move the rest of the rail system. Another important accessory are these adapter rings that come with the matte box. The opening of the matte box is 146 millimeters. There is a metal adapter ring that is attached to the matte box with these two thumb screws. 
And this ring has an opening of 142 millimeters. A large rubber ring is added to the mat box to hold the lens donuts. And you tighten it here with this round thumb screw. The opening of this rubber donut is 120 millimeters. On cheaper mat boxes, the center is a foam ring. With this one, they're all metal. And what I have here are the normal sized openings for cinema lenses. The largest and thinnest of these rings is a 114 millimeter ring. The next size is a 104 millimeter ring. There's a 95 millimeter ring as well. This is an 80 millimeter ring. The 80 millimeter donut is installed by removing the rubber ring and putting the 80 millimeter ring into the center, putting the rubber into the edges of the ring. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but it can be done quite efficiently. Fortunately, you don't have to change rings very often, especially if you have the same diam diameter lenses. You also want the 80 millimeter to be towards the matte box because there's a little lip right here that your lens will actually come in contact with. And then you put the rubber ring into the matte box and lock it. For my Olympus 12 to 40 millimeter lens, I have a step up ring that will make it almost 80 millimeters on its front. It's a 62 to 77 step up ring that just screws in the front of the lens like so. And now I close the mat box by pulling up on the lever and pulling it closed. And now I can adjust the mat box backwards and forwards to fit my ring. Here's some footage I shot outdoors with the mat box and filters and my 12 to 40 lens on my GH5. What we have is another ring which is a universal donut. The universal donut has black velvet inside and has a rubber band on the back of it and it has cloth. And you install it onto the mat box the same way you do the rubber ring and tighten it down, lift up the swing away and then swing it back. Now, we take the ring off the lens and then put this cloth over the lens, like so. And now, light will not leak into the matte box because of this cloth. You want to make sure it's tight enough that it doesn't get into your frame. Most photo lenses are not good for matte box use. They're either too short, small in diameter, or the front element moves. The best lenses are internal focus lenses like this Olympus lens. The matte box has a removable 16.9 mat. The matte box is wide enough for my Lumix 7 to 14 lens. So you can put a filter in the matte box. And this is a major plus for this lens as it has no filter ring. The handle on the top has three quarter 20 inch threads and one on each side. This matte box handle is strong enough to hold this entire rig. The JTZ DP30 matte box is for the JTZ DP30 
30 filmmaking system and is very well made. I could use this on a professional film set and there were no people who would complain about the quality and the handling of this matte box. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll see more videos like this one.